over the many years I've been doing this, I've, I've grown a thicker skin. Had I mm -hmm. started out just putting out my own stuff, it would be very difficult. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Nikki, thank you so much for your time. And given your choice of t-shirt, I have to ask you a question specific about your experience at Power Trip because you posted on your Instagram that although you are the ultimate rock person living in California, you had never seen Guns N' Roses before. How is that even possible? Explain yourself. I don't know. I mean, there I had never seen Metallica or Tool either. Um, and I just recently saw Priest a few years ago and actually Maiden um, maybe four or five years ago. I never... I never got to go see a lot of shows when I was younger. I'd seen ACDC because my dad is a huge mm -hmm. ACDC fan. I just was always like, Dad, take me, take me to go see these shows. And I didn't get to see a lot of them. And I finally, I, I had to go to this show because, I mean, who knows when, when I'll catch them again. You know, out on the road so much, it's hard for me to go and enjoy live music now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my my mind is blown completely because, I mean, we obviously know you as well from the Iron Maidens. A lot of Maiden fans will like laugh at a show when somebody says, oh, I'm seeing Maiden for the fifth time today. It's like, if you haven't seen them 25 times, come on, like you're not really a fan. How then, exactly. and we'll, 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 we'll go straight into your album that is out in just a second, but how did that journey for you then really ignite if you had never seen them, given that Maiden, good albums, no doubt about that. I mean, I'm obviously a bit of a fan myself, but- Exactly, but but known for their ridiculous shows. So how did that happen for you then? Oh, finally it taking so long to get to see them. Yeah, how, and how how did you how did you how did you just kind of discover them and, and became such a big fan? Because I mean, you know, Maiden better than most people. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I was actually listening because we're we're finally putting some new songs in the set, so it's it's exciting. Uh, getting to hear some new stuff today. I, my dad was a guitar player. Uh, both my parents are metalheads. And so actually one of the first riffs that I learned was Two Minutes to Midnight, there probably when I was 14. I, I had the Killers posters on my walls. I had the, the Power Slave van. So I've, I've always been a huge, a huge yeah, Maiden yeah, fan. Yeah. I would have thought that I'd end up growing up and playing in a, a Maiden tribute band for 11 years now. <laughs> Awesome. And let's be honest, the Killers Eddie is still the best Eddie, really. Right? Yeah, I agree. I, I love the album and I love the artwork. I've always yeah, been yeah, a yeah. huge... I, when I was little, I would sit there and draw Eddie. And then exactly. getting to meet Derek Ray, you know, Eddie's creator was, was yeah, yeah, yeah. such a highlight. Incredible. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, well, hey, let's 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 use this as a forced segue because there's definitely some Maiden and some and, and also some Guns N' Roses and some ACDC that trickled its way into your new album that is out now for three weeks as we're talking. Um, yeah. So uh, so uh, based on your reaction just yet, as I saw, as I said this, um, uh, am I talking to a more relaxed Nikki now than I would have if I talked to you four weeks ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's finally, this week has finally started calming down. I thought last week, right after the show, I thought it would finally die down a bit, but it, it did not because um, I had the power trip thing. I had shows, uh, just a bunch of stuff to do because once the album is released, there's still a million things to do to try to promote it. And yeah. that's really, I think, kind of where the, a lot of the stress came in. But once right. that initial release show was done, I could finally breathe just a little bit. Can you hear me? Is it just uh, the 
the schedule, if you will, that was keeping you filled with anxiety? Or, I mean, let's face it, the first time any artist releases... Well, I know this is not the first time that you release music under your own name, but this is the first big release that you do under your own name. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that's always a scary moment, no matter how experienced you are, because there's, I mean, you, you don't do everything yourself on an album, uh, but no, no matter who is involved, it's your name on the album, so it all is on yeah. your shoulders. Now, you've played for 11 years in, in Iron Maidens. You tend to play for an audience that can be very, very specific, and I'm sure that you will find out if that one note in that one song wasn't exactly right. Um, so I'm sure that those 11 years have made you ready for that, but nothing can really brace you for releasing a debut full-length album under your own name. So, yeah. uh, scary as well as anxious? Yeah, um, yeah, because you never know. You never know if people are going to like it, of course. It doesn't matter who you are, you're always going to have somebody that doesn't like it, that right. hates the way you sound, the way you look. So, you know, I've over the many years I've been doing this, I've, I've grown a thicker skin. Had I mm -hmm. started out just putting out my own stuff, it would be very difficult. But yeah, I luckily I have such an amazing fan base, thankfully, from the Maidens and from other stuff that I've done. So a lot of people have liked it. It's been it's been great. The the schedule leading up to it was probably the craziest thing because between the Maidens touring schedule and the other guys that I have playing with me in the band, it was almost impossible to get rehearsals lined right. up. Uh, we really could get enough lined up in between all of our schedules. And uh, in that, I think probably the scariest thing was doing my first show as a full live band too i've mm -hmm. never i mean i've played some of the songs acoustic i do a lot of acoustic shows with just myself so i think without that had i not been doing these three hour acoustic sets up by myself which is totally stripped and raw i mean you can hear right. anything that goes wrong with that and then it is tech it is completely totally on me right so i think that really helped transition into me fronting the band and i think once that show the first one was done i could finally be like okay i could do this this is that that was totally the the point of kind of no return to where i was like you know i can do this or i can't and i finally you know we had a great crowd and i can do this And when you look to your side, you see very familiar faces. The fact that you've got your your husband along the along for the ride, uh, that yeah. I I can only imagine that helps as well from a support angle. What biggest pro, biggest con on on doing this twenty four seven with your partner? Uh, you know we're in another band together called Heaven Below, yeah, yeah. and we do all the acoustic stuff together too. So luckily. We write together great. We record together great. I mean, it's it's just great because you have somebody by your side 24-7 that right. supports you, that's it's there. Right now, we're actually working on on the uh, the live video footage that we got from the night. Um, he's sitting there working on that at the moment. Uh, cons? I don't know. Maybe for him, he had to sit you know, <laughs> through like three weeks of freaking out, like, trying to get everything together yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. and withstand all of that because that was probably the most um, nerve-wracking, uh, stressful time of my life. I thought planning a wedding was hard. This was way harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, and your anniversary is coming up, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Uh, yeah, he'll be playing on a, a biker cruise with Lita, and I'm going on it to just chill and have tropical drinks on the beach. You know what? That does not sound bad to chill out from this crazy hectic time. Now, if we look at the album, um, the very last song stands out, Unite. Um, it's a little different than the rest. Somehow fear is pulled asunder. Is it a bit of a tribute to your partnership you have with your husband? Because obviously it's it it, it, it kind of feels like we are catapulted to those acoustic jam sessions that you guys do together yeah that that actually we wrote and recorded that after the album was done mm -hmm. um our band that we have together heaven below um we are finishing up an album for that that will hopefully come out 
next year we had to get mine done and now we're focusing on that one and i thought it would be cool um for fans of both things to have um this album end and kind of transition into the heaven below album so actually this last song was written to kind of be the first track of, okay. the, track of the new heaven below album and i wanted to put something in the artwork too but we just didn't have time to to work it all out but i was like oh for fans of both i think it would be cool to kind of yeah yeah, yeah. put some easter eggs in there yeah mm. awesome so, yeah uh now i mean that is the probably the most uh like that that song stands out maybe the most but all songs you know we we see very different approaches we go from basically power pop to power metal at, at times um giving yourself some additional challenges because not only do you have to know how to play you know your guitar in different ways which i know you can uh, very well but you're also pushing yourself as as a singer and you have to adopt different styles so um usually when we see a first full-length album that is quite diverse that can also be that we're not quite sure yet where we're heading in the long term um but regardless um it is a challenge for you so what's the biggest lesson about yourself whether it's your playing or your singing that you've learned as you were trying to tackle all these different genres um i i've really grown a lot as a singer on this um I, I i hear things in my head and then that's the challenge of trying to make it sound like i hear in my head right uh, that's a big challenge for me too um on some of the songs i usually like to write very structured stuff i like to go into the studio and know exactly what i'm gonna play i don't really know theory so i'm not an improv player i wish i was so there were a few of the songs where we just got into the studio and i just tried to come up with something real quick like the uh right i think the solo on the kiss from a rose cover i kind of did last minute um yeah i i think i i really learned a lot about myself as a writer and a singer and i have so many influences like i love the power metal stuff i love all the guitar stuff but i also love the simplicity in writing mm -hmm. like nirvana songs and like papa roach i i like the really catchy just simple stuff as well and so it it kind of that's why it's just a little bit everywhere on on the albums and i feel like it's that way on my ep too but i, I can't right. really one one direction i feel like i it's, it's just kind of i've got to have a little bit of it all i think but let's go a little deeper here then when it comes to just like direction but as more in a sense of what's the long-term plan for you because we obviously know how busy you are with with other bands um and 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 people that are in this in in your support band let's call it um everybody is 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 uh is, is professional everybody's busy where what's your hope and dream for your solo um career that's a great question because you know it's it's really hard to work anything around the maiden schedule and the lead of forward schedule at the moment and the other guys like you said are super busy too um i right now i have three shows scheduled and of course i in the long run i would love to just be able to focus on the solo stuff i mean that mm -hmm. that's the dream you know is to do your own thing there's nothing like playing your own music as much as i absolutely love love the iron maidens and the girls in the band they're like family but yeah i think the wish eventually would be to get to that but you know that's it's that's the hardest thing to do is is break away and to really be able to focus on the original stuff because the cost of touring is exponentially high and especially mm -hmm. as an artist and everything is on me um it's hard it's hard but you gotta try nonetheless you have a few shows already planned for um obviously we've all seen the announcement that you will be opening up for john five in las vegas um so what can we expect from that because under your own name we have this album there are some eps before uh you've done m many different things and let's be honest uh a ton of people will come to that show with a bit of a wish list of hey play this maiden song play that maiden song as well um so what can we expect from that show Man, I don't know if I'll be playing any Maiden tunes because I don't really think I can sing. Uh, 
I don't think I can do Bruce justice. <laughs> maybe <laughs> trip down where it's not expected to be like Bruce, but I don't think I can. Maybe, maybe Paul. Maybe Paul. <laughs> yeah, uh, Paul. Maybe. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, wish, <laughs> I wish I had that, that voice, but my voice is so soft. I don't think you'll expect any main in tunes. I don't think so. Um, I, I've been playing stuff off of Harmonies for the Haunted and a mm -hmm. lot, mostly Apocrypha 2. And then, of course, the seal cover. But I I don't know. Um, I was just talking about getting in a rehearsal room again with the guys. So I'm not sure how long our set is yet for that show. But uh, we're going to really try to make it, of course, a, an impressive, hard rocking one. Especially, I mean, opening for John 5. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah, uh, no, for sure. Like, uh, like the Wayne's World, I'm not worthy moment. So, yeah, we're, we're going to be uh, hitting it hard for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, the good thing is that, you know, a John 5 crowd is open to a lot of different things, so you can build a very diverse uh, set for that show. Now that you mentioned the Kiss from a Row song, like what, because um, at the same time you're saying, um, well, you know, the dream is to break away from the cover stuff and, and, and do my own stuff. Nothing, there's nothing like playing your own music. Now, Obviously, recognition and nostalgia are a big part of music, and uh, people will, will instantaneously recognize that song. Um, so I understand that you want to maybe squeeze in a cover here and there. But what was that song specifically that 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 stood out for you? That it, it could use a bit of an amped up uh, rendition. I've always loved that song um, as long as I can remember, and I just always thought, man, I can really sing the song. I love singing the song, and how cool would it be to have the guitar is doing all all of the melodies and there's so many vocal harmonies in that song. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, a lot of it could be guitar driven. Let's make it heavier. I looked on online and of course there's a million covers of the song already. Right. So I was like, well, does anybody really care? But most of them just really try to stay super true to the original. And so I was like, let's rock it up. When we played it live, I think everybody was just kind of like, yeah, like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> they were kind of confused at first, but then when they realized what song it was, uh, a lot of people were pleasantly surprised with it. And then, you know, you see a bunch of bands like like Bad Wolves, and a, yeah. you know, who are a bunch of bands who have these covers that really help, you know, it helps bring That's people sure. in that might do before, you know, so I, and I thought it was different enough, not, not just like covering a regular rock song. Right, right, right. And it is in a stark contrast with then a heavier song like, you know, As Chaos Consumes, for example, where we get yeah. a little bit more, <laughs> you know, punch in the face. Based on, on what you're talking about and how, you know, the passion that you have, it makes me feel that, um, more new material might be in the works than than has been released already. So, um, based on what you're working on, what uh, w are we gonna have more um, kisses from roses, or are we gonna have more chaos in our life with Nikki? Maybe a little bit of both. I know with the heaven below stuff that we have going right now, it's pretty straightforward, heavy, heavy hitting rock metal. Um, it's it's mostly done. It's just waiting for my guitars. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's about to full, go full steam on that. But for my own stuff, I guess I guess it's whatever I'm feeling at the moment. And then next on the next one, I'd like to have a good uh, number of songs to choose from, and then see what really all fits together well. In the future, we might see you on that stage of power trip. So let's let's end where we started. Um, Cause you're the first person I talked to that was at the festival. Oh really? Metal festivals with seats. How do we feel about that? Well, the place was, I mean, humongous, huge. I mean, we barely walked all the way to the other side. Cause luckily, you know, a, a friend uh, got us in and we had wonderful seats. Um, we still couldn't really see anybody on the stage. We were still decently far back. But I mean, we stood the whole time. You could go to other places and stand. Mm -hmm. 
But it was only a couple areas of seating. And then the rest of it was all standing and stuff. And I will say, I was tired as hell because I traveled. I flew back and forth to go to play a show in Vegas. Right. And so I was tired. So I would say, I was so stoked to have a seat to sit in between in between the bands and it was over a hundred degrees so uh but i will say hardly anybody was sitting during the actual show yeah 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 yeah. no so yeah i guess i i guess i uh i guess it is weird to see seats at a at a festival like that yeah because you look at europe and i mean nobody (laughs) (laughs) now that i think about it um have seats like that yeah, yeah. I, it's weird yeah. that i get to go and enjoy the music and be in the crowd so it, yeah, yeah, yeah it's awesome. so true well nikki i really hope that we get to see you play soon again up here in canada um uh, uh whether that is with um uh, heaven below whether that is with uh the maidens or whether that is your own solo show or maybe it's just all three together in one evening um that would be fun i look forward to that um i wish you all the best in the continued release cycle and uh look forward to seeing all the content that i'm sure you'll be creating around the show with john fire thank you so much i appreciate it and yeah i can't wait to be back to canada let's let's make it happen you are awesome for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel